Hey guys, Rebecca here. I hope you're all doing well. I'm sitting outside enjoying the rain. Uh, we're going to go through our lesson this week on the Ten Commandments, which is in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17, and also Mark chapter 12, um, verse 30 and 31. So we'll get to see a little bit how the Bible supports each other, or how it supports itself. Where we're picking up in the historical timeline is the Israelites have been freed from Egypt. God has done all these miraculous signs and wonders to um, show that he is in control and his love for people. And he is leading them through the desert to get to the promised land. And if you have more questions about that, I invite you to read um, more in Exodus chapters 1 through 19. And you can also check out our videos on YouTube and see what you've missed. Now, the people on their way to the Promised Land, they're in the desert, and they're by Mount Sinai. And so God tells Moses, hey, get the people ready. I want to meet with them. And so God is going to meet with the people and let them see and experience his presence. Now, this is important for us today, so we need to always be ready and live ready to meet God because we never know when that day will come. So the people are get themselves ready it's a three-day process and they're at Mount Sinai which is a real place that you can look up and see what it looks like today online and this is what happens when God presents himself to them now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly so this was a big exciting earth shaking experience so God is presenting himself to the people and they can literally see and feel his presence and then he speaks to them directly and they hear his voice with their very own ears and when he speaks he gives them the Ten Commandments they're in chapter 20 and we're gonna read a couple together and then I want you to read the rest at home so chapter 20 verse 1 and God spoke all these words saying I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage verse 3 you shall have no other gods before me you shall not make for yourself a carved image any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth you shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. We're going to stop there and just briefly summarize this. And um, when you're doing this at home, if you click on the link, um, you can pull up this page of discussion questions with the curriculum. And it has some more insight into the Ten Commandments for you. Sorry I'm shaking here. I'm holding the phone with my hand. Hope you're able to follow along still. Um, verse 2, where he says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. God is reminding them that he is the all-powerful God, that he loves them, and that what he's done for them. So... He's also reminding them that he's personal when he says, I am the Lord, your God. That's God saying, hey, I know you, and I am a personal God. And that's the same with us today. God is the same God he's always been. All of these things happened 3,000 years ago, but God has not changed. And he still wants all of us to know him and to love him. Verse 3 says, you shall have no other gods before me. God wants our whole heart and devotion. He doesn't want just a little piece of our lives. He doesn't want added to our lives for us to just have Jesus on Sunday. He wants us to seek him with our and give him our whole hearts. Verse 4 says, You shall not make for yourself a carved image. Well, these are called idols. People used to have little statues, and today we don't really have little statues that we walk around with and be like, Oh, praise this. But... We have other things that we can easily and subtly let into our lives to take the place of God in our heart. And so God is saying, hey, this is a warning. Don't do this. 
um, the first four commandments are God telling us how to love him and have a right relationship with him. The last six are God telling us how to love people and have a good relationship with them. So now we're going to go to Mark chapter 12 and read verse 30 and 31. I've got my Bible pre-marked, but you can pause here if you want to read that with along with me. Verse 30, Jesus says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment, and the second like it is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Well, if God the Father and God the Son say the same thing to people, that's a heads up to us that, hey, this is important. It's been repeated. So, my question to you, and this is also in the discussion questions, is do we obey these? Do we do these perfectly? The answer is no, none of us do. Um, we simply cannot. God's standard is perfection, and that's what he gave us. All of these things, in order for us to do them perfectly, we would have to be perfect. God knew that we weren't perfect, and he loves us anyway, so he, wanting a relationship with us, sent Jesus to live the perfect life and to die on the cross in our place so that he could pay the price for our sins, and he rose him on the third day, showing that the payment had been made, that the barrier, the separation of sin between people and God had been broken, and that a way had been made for us to be reunited with God. God does this for everyone. This is for all people at all times. However, this, these standards, they don't go away. But when you become a Christian, because you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. And the Holy Spirit gives you the enabling that you need to live for God. See, the Holy Spirit comes in and he makes you a new creation. You're, it's called being born again. You're born of the Spirit. And as the Spirit is living inside of you, He teaches you about God. He, you start to change and more and more. The, le the more you know God, the more you become like Him, the more you want to know Him, the more you come to love Him, and the less you sin. You just start to do these things naturally because you become brand new. And this is an opportunity that God provides for everyone. So if you have questions about that, please contact us at Calvary Chapel. We would love to pray with you and give you resources and help you along the way. And it's important. It's a life or death situation because we'll all meet God someday. So we need to be ready to meet him. And the way we can be ready to meet him is to be born again so that we become part of his family and he welcomes us with open arms into his kingdom. Well, that's all I have for you today. Uh, I hope you're doing well and that you're blessed. God bless you all. Goodbye.